Am I the a-hole for going home when my wife didn't let me into the delivery room? My male 28, wife female 29 gave birth a few days ago. We had what I believe to be a fairly standard pregnancy, and I did my best to take care of things and make it easy for her. I took her to the hospital when she was due and her sister and mother met us there. The problem started when she was taken to the delivery room. She asked the nurse that only her mother and sister, female 27, be allowed in the delivery room and then told me that she wanted me to wait until I've delivered and calmed down before letting me into the room. I was kind of shocked and didn't want to make a scene, so I just said okay and sat down in the waiting room. We had not really discussed the plan for the hospital, and I had no reason to think I wouldn't be there when my son was born. I texted her sister if she knew my wife was going to do this. She said no. I told her to ask if my wife was concerned about something, because I don't consider myself someone who would have made a fuzz or made things more difficult for her. She texted back after a while saying that my wife just doesn't want you to see her like this, and then added that she didn't agree with my wife and tried to convince her. But ultimately, it was her choice, and I should just respect it. I sat in the waiting room for six hours getting minimal updates as the labor was fairly slow. And then I decided that there was no point, so I texted her sister that I was going home. I'd meet my son when they brought him home and handle the birth certificate stuff the next day. They came home about nine hours later and I was finally able to meet my son. When my wife's mother and sister left, she got very angry at me for leaving her at a hospital. I was angry too, but I told her that we can't talk about this in a few days because she's just given birth. She wouldn't drop the subject. So I finally told her that she excluded me from the birth of my son for no reason. I didn't see the need to hang around a hospital waiting room for hours doing nothing. And that even her own sister thinks what she did was wrong. She said there could have been complications and I needed to be there. To which I replied that no, I wouldn't have been there because she kept me out of the room. And the doctors would have handled any problems anyways. She called me an inconsiderate a-hole and has been talking short with me for several days. Her sister told me I should just apologize and move past it because it was a stressful time for my wife. But I think I'm owed a bigger apology first for how I was excluded from my own son's birth. Now for the top comments. We had not really discussed the plan for the hospital. Everyone sucks here for this right here. Y'all just thought everything would go okay and didn't even think to like, make sure you were on the same page about a major medical procedure slash bringing a person into the world? She had mentioned that her mother and sister would be there, which I was fine with. She just neglected to mention that I wouldn't be. And I guess you can blame me now for not asking. I'm allowed to, right? And assuming that both parents would be there for the birth of their child. Okay then. I originally had a reaction of the commentary you're replying to. But this shows you did have conversations about who would be in the room during delivery, during which she never mentioned not wanting you there. I guess you didn't specifically clarify, but I wouldn't expect that to be something you would have to clarify. That was something she had to have made clear from her end, if that was what she wanted. Total not day home. Not day home. If your wife didn't want you to be in the delivery room, that should have been discussed ahead of time. She essentially shut the door in your face and expects you to have just waited in the uncomfortable waiting room for 15 hours. That's not okay. Or two days. I went through seven or eight shifts of nurses when I delivered my first. I would never forgive her. I'm surprised it didn't go straight to a divorce lawyer. I never would have done this to my children's father. Info. I feel like this can't be the full story. You guys didn't talk about any of this until the day of? What has your relationship with your wife been like? Etc. I have had four children, my oldest with a different man. The delivery room was never discussed. It was just assumed that the fathers would be there and that's what happened. I feel like that's a safe assumption, actually. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for outing my husband to his family for missing our son's birth? My female 26 husband, male 30, Jerry, works in a company that requires him to travel a lot. When I was pregnant, I used to stay with my in-laws whenever he had a trip. His parents are saints. They adore me. They always offer to help with everything. They say that I'm like the daughter they never had. Before I gave birth, 
Jerry told me he had to go on a business trip. And he was most likely going to miss our son's birth because he was going away for two weeks. I was upset, but he explained that he was doing this to be able to provide for us and our son. I wasn't okay with it, but it's ultimately his decision. Though I'm sure if he had explained to his company, they'd have probably given him time off. Jerry asked that I go stay with my family instead of his, because he said that if they found out that he was going on a trip and missing our son's birth, they'd give him grief. I agreed, but went to stay with my family. Turned out that Jerry lied to his parents about being there for our son's birth and asked them to not visit till later because he was allegedly worried for our newborn and wanted me to get rest. Then last Sunday, his mom and dad finally visited after he returned from his trip and I returned home after staying with my family for a couple of weeks. We were talking about our son. Jerry's mom asked Jerry about our hospital stay, and he said that I didn't stop complaining about everything and that I was being difficult to everyone. I was shocked. His mom laughed and said all women are like that after giving birth, but I told her that yes, but not all men abandon their wives during one of their most difficult times and miss their first baby's birth over a work trip that could have easily been rescheduled. Jerry's mom asked what I meant, and I told her that her son wasn't there for the birth of his first child. She unleashed her anger upon him and his dad joined in too. A huge argument ensued, and Jerry started lashing out then told me we had to leave. In the car, he went off calling me childish and petty for outing him to his parents and tattling on him like that. He said that I had no right to even complain because it wasn't like he was on a vacation or golfing trip but it was just working hard to be able to provide for us as the breadwinner. And I should respect that and be thankful instead of steering crap and trying to gain his parents' sympathy while turning them against him. I got home and started crying while arguing with him. He still said I was out of line to do what I did and act like his work isn't as important. We stopped talking after that. And from what I understand, his parents are still pretty much upset with him and he's saying that I'm the reason why he's being harassed by them. I think that I went too far by telling them. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. So, he was okay throwing you under the bus and saying you were being difficult, then expected you to just go along with his lie? He could have easily said, you know, it was such a whirl I can't really remember. And at least then he wouldn't have thrown you under the bus. Exactly. If it kept his trap hole shut, it wouldn't have become worse than it already was with him missing the birth of his first child. If I would have even thought about how it'd be turned to ashes by my family and their mother's family. I genuinely don't know how the marriage could be salvaged after that many layered betrayals. The guy doesn't even try to make sure he could be there to support his wife during childbirth. Betrayal number one. He asks her to help conceal this fact from his own family by denying her their support during and after the birth. Betrayal number two. He actively lies to his family about being there for the birth behind her back. Betrayal number three. That lie contains additional lies that paint an unflattering and embarrassing picture of OP. Betrayal number four. And when OP correctly exposes all this and gets angry with him, he turns it all around on her and shoves her righteous hurt and fury back down her throat. Betrayal number five. These are not the actions of a well-meaning, but frightened slash misguided man. This is the behavior of a man who feels entitled to do whatever he wants, no matter how selfish or dishonest, and still be praised and obeyed. That's a core character flaw and not one that Opie can fix. You're completely right. All of this is giving me rotten to the core vibes. Opie sounds very trusting and patient, but if I were her, I'd do some more digging into his business trips. Even if he didn't personally care about being there for the birth, he knew what a big deal it was to Opie and his family. Yet it seems like he didn't even raise the issue with his company. Highly suspicious. Not today, home. What else is he going to miss because he is providing for his family? Worst part is that he was making it out like you were a pain in the butt in the hospital. That was an a hole move. For me, that would make me reconsider being married to him. Next story. Am I the a hole for refusing to roll my sleeves up or my father in law's request? So, I'm gonna preface this by saying that I, male 32, was an addict for six years. I got clean and no longer use. However, I do have scars all over both of my arms from using. And although I tend to cover up due to shame and insecurity, 
I finally made peace with my past. I met my now wife, and have been clean for four years now. Her family are decent folks, except her dad can be a bit hostile towards me. But he always says he's just trying to make sure his daughter is treated well. We both have this tension between us that never seems to fade. I recently found out that my wife is pregnant. We were both overjoyed and excited to tell everybody, starting with my in-laws. We visit some days ago and broke the news to everyone. My father-in-law started side-eyeing me for a bit and sitting there while everyone was congratulating us. My wife asked her dad if he was okay, and he just got up from his seat and walked up to me and said that he wanted me to roll my sleeves up so he could take a look at my arms. I looked at him in utter confusion, and he bluntly said, You got a baby on the way. I want to make sure my daughter is making the right decision and you're not using again. I got mad and we began exchanging words. I refused to show him my arms and told him off. My mother-in-law asked me to do it because I have nothing to hide, yet I refused because it felt beyond disrespectful. More family got involved telling me to just do it to ease my father-in-law's mind a bit, but I got up and told my wife we needed to leave. We left and my wife blew up at me in the car saying I just created a necessary drama and conflict and made her dad suspect that I'm back to using by refusing to let him take a look at my arms. I argued that his request was insulting and made it seem like my word doesn't deserve to be trusted. She said I could have just rolled my sleeves up for a minute and be done with it instead of making a scene and getting her dad upset. I didn't know how to respond so I kept my mouth shut. We got home and she kept avoiding me while blaming me for messing up her joy. Part of me says that I was stupid for not complying and doing what my father-in-law wanted while another part insists that his request was demeaning and downright insulting to me and my struggle as a former addict. But I'm conflicted in how I handled this. Did I overreact? Now for the comments. Not day home. You didn't give your in-law any reason for him to be thinking that you were using again. It was just him being a home. And would reconsider your relationship with your wife as well. Exactly. Why did she shut her father down immediately? I think it's because she may think that her father had a right to do so. Not day home. You did not overreact at all. What your father-in-law did was completely demeaning, rude, and unnecessary. He created the unnecessary drama by not asking but demanding something of you that already has a lot of shame and insecurity attached to it in front of everyone. Sounds like they all, including your wife, need to be educated in why comments and demands like those can hinder an addict. I agree not stay home. Father-in-law could have asked him privately about it if he was so concerned, and everyone kept putting pressure on Opie to comply with his demand. But his wife's reaction surprised me the most. Like, shouldn't she be more knowledgeable and sympathetic to her husband's past struggles? Her saying Opie ruined her joy instead of our joy... Since, you know, Opie's also going to be a parent, it's such a my day vibe. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter the truth of how I felt about being pregnant? And why have no photos of me pregnant with her? My 52 female daughter, 28 female, is expecting her first child with her husband in June. I am very excited to be a grandmother. My daughter is very, very exotic and cannot wait to be a mother. She already has the nursery all picked out, started buying clothes, getting toiletries such as nappies and wipes organized, it works. We have a very close relationship, and she texts me about her first kicks, baby's heartbeat. She has this thing called a Doppler, potential names, etc. I'm thrilled she's so exotic and happy because, in all honesty, it was the very opposite of how I felt. The truth is, I hated being pregnant with both my children. Pregnancy honestly scared me. I was anxious all the time. Every movement and lack of made me scared. I hated the feeling of being so heavy and limited in movement. On top of all the normal pregnancy symptoms of fatigue, nausea, swollen ankles, hemorrhoids, sore back and feet, etc. And then don't get me started on the childbirth, which was next level. Don't get me wrong, I was very excited to become a mom and I love both my children. They are my absolute world. I just didn't like the process to get there. One thing she bought was one of those baby memory books. 
It has already started by putting some photos of her bump and ultrasound photos in them. For fun, she dug out the baby books I had for both her and younger brother, and we looked through them for a trip down memory lane. For both books, I started at the newborn stage. The pages for 20-week bump and first ultrasound etc. are blank for both. My daughter asked why this was the case. She always thought maybe it was the lack of technology of the time. For you youngins out there, yes, we did have cameras and ultrasounds in the 90s. This is when I told her the truth, that I hated being pregnant. It made me scared and anxious, and I didn't want any memories of it. Pregnancy and childbirth terrified me, even for her younger brother when I had a bit more of an idea. I also explained why I was so happy to see her so happy, because I didn't want her to feel like I did. She got very quiet and didn't seem very engaged the rest of the time looking at books. When she left to go home, she seemed a bit distant. Later that night, my son-in-law called me to say my daughter was very upset about what I said. Apparently, I made her feel unwanted, like she was a burden to bear. I was shocked and upset to hear that myself, because that was the opposite of how I felt and told my son-in-law that. I explained I love my daughter and her brother very much, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. I just didn't like being pregnant, but that doesn't mean my child was not wanted. My son-in-law understood, but still said my daughter is upset. Am I the a-hole for confessing my feelings? I feel very guilty, and the last thing I wanted to do was stress my pregnant daughter out. A time when stress and feeling upset needs to be kept to a minimum. Not the a-hole. I think the disservice that women have done each other is not being honest about what pregnancy is really like. We have created an environment where women feel as if they are horrible human beings if they don't enjoy their pregnancies. Pregnancy can be extremely difficult and uncomfortable. Some people are fortunate to feel that their pregnancies were all butterflies and rainbows, but that is not everyone's experience. Being honest about not enjoying your pregnancies doesn't mean that you don't love your child or that you wouldn't have done it all over again just to get the end result of having them. Your daughter asked you a question and you were honest with her. And motherhood. I was just going to say this. Take breastfeeding for example. Many women can't or simply do not want to breastfeed. My wife hated breastfeeding. It only did it a little bit with our first child before she gave up. Although she did pump with our third because of the passing the COVID vaccine antibodies. It drives her nuts. And I know it hurts her when all these women act like breastfeeding is the greatest gift a mother can give her child. And any mother who chooses not to doesn't share this special bond only women who breastfeed have with their babies. 